Welcome Trinidad and Tobago to our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Let's take a look at the headlines. Government, opposition and independent senators debate the bail amendment bill. Solar panels soon to be introduced in rural areas. And national mentorship program to aid in curbing crime among youth. Thank you for joining us. Attorney General Senator Anand Ram Logan brought the bail amendment bill to the Upper House on Tuesday. During his contribution and the second reading, the AG cited the need to incorporate other offences under the bill. The bail amendments bill will seek to give members of the police service the legal authority to put a dent in crime when arresting criminals. This was a point made by Attorney General Anand Ram Logan as he took the bail amendments bill to the upper house on Tuesday. In painting a picture of the current situation under the present law, the AG says changes to the law will seek to remove what he describes as a flaw in the system which denies a person the right to bail completely if there are three previous convictions, to one where if convicted in the last 10 years and charged again, there will be no bail until after 120 days. This is an improvement because after 120 days, you have the right to apply for bail. From a complete withdrawal of bail, after 120 days, you have the right to apply for bail. So that any criticism, and I ask senators to bear that in mind, colleagues, because any criticism we can voice, and I'm not saying it will not be legitimate, I'm not saying I will not treat with it, but I am making the point that we must, we must listen to the criticisms in the context of the law as is. And the law as is, is that we already have two strikes and three strikes and you're out, and we also already have one strike and you're out for firearm offenses. So what we are doing in a sense, in essence, is to expand the category of offenses that are subject to the existing one strike rule from gun related offenses to a much wider category. So we are casting the net wider. He says we need to be mindful of the law that upholds the right to life and security of a criminal outlaws in the nation. When there is a rape of a six-year-old, when a body is stuffed in a barrel and covered, nobody sees anything. But if a police go, everybody sees it. This is the reality, and that is why I made the point. There are some communities waiting to exhale. There are good people in them. There are decent people in them. And our job as a parliament must be to help them by giving the police the legislative equipment and tools that they need to pull out those bandits. Let the communities exhale. Let the people go through and breathe a sigh of relief so that they, the gang man who tried to pimp them out, who tried to recruit them, recruit them in the gang and threaten them, that they will be given a fair chance at life. The AG says the new law will apply to offences including murder, rape, drug trafficking and kidnapping. The average man has nothing to worry about, you know. This applies to people who are convicted of a serious, dangerous, violent crime. And having been so convicted and served your time, you get out of jail and you go to repeat offend. You go to commit a crime again. And the crime you're going to commit again is a serious, dangerous, or violent crime. What are some of the, what are the offenses? Pos fire and possession, last year for motor vehicle. I heard people criticize that. They say, but car thief is no big thing. Where you, want to, you want to deal with that by Ram Logan? I want to tell someone car thief is a big thing. And you know why it's a big thing? Because when the thief a car today, it is a prelude to the commission of a more serious crime. Invariably, when there is a murder or there is a robbery, it is, pre it is preceded by a car thief. The bail amendment bill was passed in the lower house last Friday. Kimberam Callowan, News 4. Subsequently, Senator the Honorable Gary Griffith, Minister of National Security, said that the Bail Amendment Bill 2013 will aid in the dismantling of gangs in this country. This as he appealed for support of the bill from opposition and independent senators. Wasting no time in getting to his point, Senator the Honorable Gary Griffith, Minister of National Security, said though he is aware of arguments put forward about a person's constitutional rights being violated through this legislation, his focus is on those citizens who are losing their liberties and need the protection. 
The minister urged senators to stop thinking about the rights of criminals and start thinking about those law-abiding citizens. Within that line, Mr. Vice President, it has to do with us being here to ensure that the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago, they have definitely their most fundamental right, and that is their right to live. Mr. Vice President, I have, been, I have heard that this bill may be perceived to be an attack on the constitutional liberties of individuals. But what I do ask is for us to look at the 1.3 million law-abiding citizens in this country. What about these citizens who are losing their constitutional liberty daily? Their constitutional liberty to walk the streets, their constitutional liberty where it is they are, they are being raped, murdered, and well, but because we are concerned that we are looking at the rights of the criminals over the rights of the law-abiding citizens. Explaining that the Anti-Gang Act does not have any provisions with respect to the denial of bail, Minister Griffith stated that this was why the bail amendment bill was needed so urgently. Mr. Vice President, I just want to clarify what that Anti-Gang Act 2011 to what this is. It's, it's chalk and cheese. It's two totally different things. The Anti-Gang Act 2011 was introduced in Parliament in 2010, and it was enacted to address the scorching gang activities. But the Anti-Gang Act does not deal with the issue of bail. The offenses under the Anti-Gang Act are the same ones dealt with under this bill, listed as specified offenses, except for the offense of murder. And under the existing bail act, a person charged with murder is not entitled to bail, and other offenses being treason, piracy or hijacking on any other offense. The Honorable Minister noted that the bail bill would also boost citizens' confidence and encourage them to provide information to the police. What will cause detection rate to improve other than a proper crime scene investigation? Good forensic, good DNA. It has to do, Mr. Vice President, with human, human intelligence. And human intelligence is the catalyst towards that information being turned into, into um, information to intelligence and then to evidence. You cannot get that information because the citizens, they, they either do not trust, they do not have confidence, or they are afraid to pass the information on. Mr. Vice President, without this bill, you really cannot blame the citizen. Felicia Wilson, more news for. More news when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Ministry of Public Utilities is looking into providing power to rural areas via the introduction of solar panels. Minister Nizambaksh says this is being done in areas where installation of electricity remains difficult. He was speaking during the installation of lights at the La Cuesa Recreational Grounds in Claxton Bay. The Public Utilities Ministry is offering to provide power supply from a different kind of source, from the sun. Line Minister Nizam Bak says TNTech is looking into providing solar power to rural areas where installation of electricity lines is difficult. The minister made the announcement during a public lighting of the La Cuesa Recreation Ground in Claxton Bay. We have people in very rural communities and where it is uneconomical for TNTech to take the, the lines to them, we will provide a solar system up to a value of $25,000 to assist those people to provide electricity to their homes. And you know today that the, the Prime Minister um, is giving uh, every child who enters the secondary school and so a uh, computer. And I've had people in my own constituency who came and said, Minister or MP, look, they don't have electricity at home. And they have computers, so they go to neighbors and you know, a little distance away, so that we are providing opportunities so that everyone in this country. The project will take place under the Utilities Assistance Program, UAP. Under this initiative, low-income earning citizens, as well as senior citizens, are now able to access basic utilities such as water and electricity. The Utilities Assistance Program, which previously catered to low-income pensioners and persons with a certified disability who are in receipt of a government grant, is now open to eligible persons who do not receive any assistance from government. The UAP is also providing assistance in the form of water tanks and solar panels to eligible households and community facilities that do not have access 
to pipe bond water or electricity. However, while the illumination of these grounds is just one of the many Tiantec has done so far, the lighting represents a new step in the life of the village and the supporting of sporting groups in the area. Minister of the People and Social Development, Dr. Glenn Ramadasing, described this as a development of the community spirit. These lights will extend the life of this community. Whereas you used to cut off by five, six, I remember coming here and we having meetings about the farmers and about the land and there would be boisterous comments and so on. And as the darkness started to set in, people made their comments very brief because the day was coming to an end. Now we could have these meetings until 10 o'clock in the night. And therefore, the life of the community is going to move from 5, 6 o'clock to 9, 10 o'clock. So those are hours that the community can breathe and exhale and inspire oxygen and develop and grow. Over 211 parks, sporting complexes and recreational grounds have been lighted since the start of the illumination program. Kimberam Kalawan, News 4. Chairman of Government's National Mentorship Program, Wayne Riley, is adamant that the creation of the National Mentorship Program could not have come at a more opportune time. The program was established in 2011 and according to Mr. Riley, it has served as a barrier between many young people and a life of crime. The breakdown in family values, absent parents, fathers being denied access to their children, lack of self-worth and lack of reference to God. These were some of the reasons listed for many young people turning to a life of crime. These very reasons are also behind the creation of government's national mentorship program, which seeks to break the trend of young people being inducted into the life of crime. The national mentorship program was created in 2011 and January has been celebrated as National Mentorship Month. Speaking at the specially held one-day symposium to sensitize stakeholders on the operations of the National Mentorship Program, Chairman Wayne Riley said the program has made positive impacts in the lives of many youths since it came on board. While praising the efforts of the government, he stated that it was the responsibility of every government to ensure that its youths were not led astray. The need for a program of this nature is indicative of the current social climate, which is scourging our youth, destroying our posterity, and threatening the future of our society. And if it is to be interrupted, then it is a symposium of this nature that will help us. All societies of high modernity, even post-modernity, have understood the need to socially transmit values, morals, and norms which have kept societies civilized and strong. They labor regularly to ensure that citizens display high levels of cultural literacy, defined as a, as a way of knowing how to exist peacefully and successfully in the geographical space which they occupy. In advising that they should lead by example, Mr. Riley told adults they should be what they wanted young people to become. I want you to focus on becoming first the model you would love to see our young people to be and simply to model it. Meantime, delivering remarks to the mentors at the symposium, the Honorable Mbao Mohini, Minister of State and the Ministry of National Security, urged that selflessness be practiced in order for positive changes to be made. There are times when we must lift ourselves above our natural inclinations. And even if it is for a moment, live and act from a higher principle. The act of mentoring that our mentees will be engaged in is one such act that requires a selfless spirit. Felicia Wilson Moore, News 4. Sport is on the other side. Stay with us. To Sport News Now, 
It was an emotional event on Wednesday as the members of the Trinidad and Tobago Under-20 Women's Team were honored by the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company for their history-making showing at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship. The praise and tears flowed, as you will see in this report from Wayne Cunningham. News for sports at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship, courtesy the Ministry of Sport and the Sport Company of Trinidad and Tobago. Olympian extraordinaire Cleopatra Borel had an inspirational message for the national under-20 women's team as praises continue to come in following their performance at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship. Your greatest disappointments in sport, your greatest disappointments in life, sometimes turn out to be your greatest source of motivation. There's a space that you girls feel right now and it's an empty space that should have been your trip to the World Cup. And you have to fill that space with something. You can't fill it with fear. You can't be afraid to keep going. What you have to do is to push yourself. Team manager Lindell Hoyt Sanchez had a difficult start to her presentation as emotions took over while expressing gratitude to all who assisted in the campaign. It's the first time we have ever had uh, a Minister of Sport come out and actually train with the team, um, motivated them in the training sessions, actually ran sessions with them. And I really want to say thanks very much, Mr. Minister. <laughs> we had total support from the Ministry of Sport, the sport company. Thanks again. And we cannot say how thankful we are because without the support and the help from the Ministry of Sport and the sport company, um, I'm not too sure if we would have been anywhere close to where we were. The Honorable Anil Roberts, Minister of Sport, appreciated the emotions from the manager. When you see the manager crying, all you give her a round of applause, you know, because you know how long we waiting for that? How many of you all have seen teams lose and man partying and girl partying and dress up and gone in zen and so on. Those days we fed up at that. So you cry, girl. Yes, you cry from no, we like that. The tears continue to flow as the minister addressed the players. I came and I saw. I looked and I saw into your heart. I saw into the passion. I saw that you all were always punctual, sometimes ahead of the staff. You all were there working hard. You all were running hard. Even when I gave you all some workouts that you say, and you went home and talked, but that man mad, boy. We feel it is. Yes, I hear all of that too. I say all kind of thing. You all came though, and you did the running. You did your workouts, and you did not complain. You were successes. You were successful because you dared to take a risk to put your heart and soul into something. And that's a brilliant thing. Because many of us in this country are afraid to take full risk. Because with risk, there is a possibility of great bitter disappointment. However, if you look at it in the correct light, there will never be that sort of disappointment. Because your effort will never be forgotten. Team Captain Anik Walker spoke directly to a nation. Sorry to disappoint, but that's how it ended up. And you know, we just have to keep the faith move forward and this is what God wanted I never doubt him so we just have to continue on again thanks a lot we in Cunningham news for sports Tobagonians urge to become self-sufficient after the break stay with us Welcome back. Tobagonians ought to wake up and start working towards developing the business and agricultural sector, given that the island has bountiful resources that are underutilized. This according to advisor to the Minister of Tobago Development, George Stanley Baird, during the Ministry of Tobago Development's first installment of what's dubbed a Village Expo. 
Mr. George Stanley Beard admonished Tobagonians to get out of slumber and start developing sustainable businesses in Tobago using resources right here. This as he was tasked with bringing greetings on behalf of Dr. Delman Baker at the Ministry's Village Expo. Mr. Baird says for too long, Tobago has been left behind where development is concerned. But with the assistance from the Ministry of Tobago Development, this must change and the change must start now. All of Tobago requires development because we can't even play catch up. So it means we need to stimulate activities throughout the island of Tobago before it can even think of catching up with the kinds of developments that have taken place in Trinidad. Mr. Baird says Tobago has a lot of untapped resources that can very well foster economic growth. We're not trying to tell the Assembly how to run the tourism plant. We're trying to get and to empower our citizenry. And this, is what the, this is what the Ministry of Tobago Development is about. Empowering our citizens to understand that work just doesn't come or money doesn't just come from the THA or from the government for that matter. Money comes from work done by ordinary citizens doing things, becoming self-employed, but you must have the skills in order to do it. He placed a group at the expo on spot this group from Palo Suve makes, among other products, wines. He told them they cannot just stop at making and selling wines. In fact, Mr. Baird advised them to start a wine and pork festival. This festival, he said, will help to not only market their goods, but the goods of the person minding and slaughtering the pigs for the pork aspect of the festival. He continued that what the ministry does is lead these skilled persons along the right path, ensuring that they have a feasible business plan, and then send them off to the Tobago House of Assembly for funding and possibly an area where their business can be set up. He stressed the need for persons to get back into the spirit of producing food, as Tobago was once known for its rich agricultural sector, which fed the entire country. Mr. Baird further went on to the tourism aspect of the island, citing that every village should have a village museum. Not only to show household relics, but to make sure that credit is given to the sons and daughters of that community who were the persons, the best fishermen? Who were the fishermen, the butchers, the agriculturalists, the, the blacksmith, whatever? He said when a tourist visits Tobago and goes into each museum, they can easily understand the history of the island. The two-day village expo, which has been themed History in Motion, sought to showcase ancient artifacts, local produce, and local historians of Tobago. Schools were invited to browse the expo and gain further knowledge about the space they occupy in the entire world, called Tobago. Reporting from Tobago, Patricia Nicholson, News 4. And that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Joseph Lopez. Thank you for watching.